everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I want to do a dual book review for two non-fiction books that I've read recently. They are both about Salinger, which, uh, as most of you know probably, I have been reading through J.D. Salinger's entire body of work in January of 2019 to celebrate his 100th anniversary and alongside that I also picked up two books, two non-fiction books to read uh, to learn more about Salinger's life. So I'm going to start off talking about J.D. Salinger Alive by Kenneth Slavinsky. This is a biography that came out um, quite soon after Salinger's death. It was originally published in 2010 and it follows J.D. Salinger's entire life as biographies tend to do um, through his uh, upbringing, his close relationship with his mother, uh, his quite uh, unsuccessful history in school, um, his, the experiences that he ex the experiences of the Second World War and how much of that affected him for his entire lifetime and especially inspired his writing um, and also the early beginnings of his writing career and how um, so you see the progression of his writing career uh, starting with uh, being a short story writer and trying to get his work published uh, but eventually becoming someone who was uh, not just famous for his writing, but also famous for him, his personality and his lifestyle. Um, he was very well known for being a recluse or someone who, who valued his privacy very highly. So reading a biography about him is kind of strange because a biography by its very essence is going to be looking um, quite personally on uh, one individual's life. Um, However, I think uh, Kenneth Slovensky does uh, carry this intention of um, honoring uh, Salinger's wishes by being quite neutral in his language and in his uh, conclusions on Salinger's own thoughts and Salinger's uh, decision making and things like that. Um, it is a very respectful biography, I felt, uh, while still being very insightful and giving you a lot of the context around both Salinger's work itself, um, the peers he had and the kind of part he played in uh, publishing, uh, like the publishing industry and how his relationship with publishing was very fraught. He had, um, he sort of started off by being uh, very eager to become a writer and then quite soon after becoming famous he um, felt sort of distanced uh, or that he uh, started distancing himself from his uh, fame, took a step back from his name and all that it um, entailed. Um, a lot of this book uh, really shows how um, Salinger tries to keep control on his work and his rights uh, to do with his work. It raises a lot of interesting questions in regard to copyright, uh, in regard to the artist's uh, ownership of their art and uh, especially the sort of the role that uh, interpretation and ownership of uh, the consumer of the art, uh, how that uh, sort of um, relates relates to the artist or the creator. Um, Salinger had a lot of specific uh, ideas and opinions on um, his rights regarding his publishing and opinions also about the book design and things like that. So I think if you're at all interested in Salinger as a person, as a writer, um, some of the influences that shaped his writing career and uh, a lot of the controversies around him uh, in regard to his relationship with other people within the publishing industry, his uh, view on his fame and the um, the duality of him wanting to write and uh, wanting to have an audience uh, as a writer but also feeling off-put by the fame um, given him. Uh, so I think it is a very interesting um, person to read a biography on and it is a biography that is very um, thorough and um, is very respectful. The, the facts uh, are quite neutrally 
uh, sort of provided for you, presented to you, rather than always being told in a very strong narrative voice. And that was sort of my main uh, qual with the book. Uh, but I, I still think it's uh, really worth it if you're interested in Salinger as a person. Um, the other book that I read that also relates to Salinger, although um, less directly, is My Salinger G Year by Joanna Rakoff. This is a memoir about the author's uh, one year working with the literary agency uh, that represented J.D. Salinger. Salinger was um, planning to publish one of his short stories, actually I think one of the latest short stories that he published in, um, in a magazine, I think The New Yorker. Um, he was planning to publish it in a hardcover with a very small press um, towards the end of his life. Jenna Rakoff starts working at the literary agency um, as an assistant right during the time that this deal is supposedly going to happen, although it falls through in the end. But the interesting thing about reading this so close with the biography is that the biography only talks about this in very uh, in a very indirect way. Uh, Kenneth Slavinsky doesn't really go into depth about what happened and why it fell through, uh, whereas uh, this book deals with that much more directly, obviously, because the, the writer worked with the literary agency at the time and actually had contact with Salinger. It's set in the, uh, in the middle of the 90s in New York, and because of that you get sort of the Devil Wears Prada esque vibes to this book. Um, it also reminded me a little bit of Dear Mrs. Bird uh, because of the fact that the, the uh, Rakoff uh, also is responsible for answering J.D. Salinger's fan mail. She's supposed to follow this very um, formulaic uh, response but she ends up feeling so much for these people who have written to Salinger. Uh, so she ends up starting writing these formulaic answers or replies uh, but ends up actually writing quite uh, thorough responses because she starts to really care about these people and that really reminded me of Dear Mrs. Bird which is one of the things that the uh, protagonist gets into trouble uh, doing. Um, but this book is, is really charming, I think, which is uh, the, the main thing that really made this such an enjoyable reading experience. It does talk about the work that the literary agency does, and it does talk about Salinger, in particular his preferences when it comes to uh, book design, um, how he liked a certain a font in his books or the, a certain shape and um, the spacing should be just so and everything like that is really interesting is sort of like a little little tidbits about Salinger and his opinions um, but most of this book is about Rakov's uh, life sort of transitioning from being a student to start uh, starting this new job, um, moving to New York from London, and uh, sort of her transition in life, um, and also figuring out her own thing. And it's about, like, it's mo mostly about her life, and the literary agency is the job which is very central to her life at this point in time. Um, but I think I just found it very engaging to read. The parts that she writes about her, her experience reading Salinger for the first time is beautiful and um, really well written. My only real uh, like critique of this book, I think, is the author's sometimes tendency to um, to overlook the things that she does have. Uh, so she sometimes mentions things like she's really hungry, she can barely feed herself, um, that she doesn't have enough money to uh, buy food, but yet uh, she is constantly buying uh, takeaway or buy eating out. And it's a little bit hard to sympathize when you see those um, obvious parallels to what she does have access to. Um, the resources that she has available to her versus her her way of thinking about her situation. While I can understand and and, and sympathize with uh, this very big transition in her life and uh, things being different from 
uh, what she's been living with, how it is a very major uh, change in her life. I still feel like there's uh, sometimes a little bit of lack of uh, introspectiveness around that. But other than that, I think this is a really in enjoyable memoir and I would highly recommend it, even if you're not interested in Salinger uh, or if you've only heard of him and not read his books. I think probably if you've finished this book, uh, you will uh, pick up Salinger's works if you haven't already. So those are the two books that I wanted to review today. Let me know if you've read any of these books, uh, what, what your thoughts are. If you have any recommendations for uh, memoirs like uh, My Salinger Year, I would really love to hear about them. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.